You know, for all of my faults, one of the things that I'm consistently praised on is my ability to create a really good PowerPoint deck. And I'm talking beyond just the nuts and bolts of designing it. It's the story crafting, the selection of media, thinking about it like an actual production, which gets me thinking, can ChatGPT replace me? According to AI thought leader Josh Cavalier, it's getting there and we're gonna put it to the test. Let's create some PowerPoint slides using Josh's tips and strategies in this video. Okay, I've looked at a couple of his methods and the one that we're going to use is the simplest and I think it's the most accessible for the layman professional. And that's the round trip of going from chat GPT to Word, by the way, Microsoft Word web version, so the online version, to PowerPoint. It's surprisingly effective, and I'm gonna demonstrate it right now using Josh's recommended prompt tips that you're seeing right here. So let me follow you through the path and I'll show you how it works. It's impressive, but it's not gonna replace me. <laughs> let's just put that out of the wayside, but it's very impressive. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're here in chat.openai.com. If you're one of the uh, 9 billion people that have visited this all right, congratulations, you know how it works. If this is new to you, this is OpenAI. This is their system. Microsoft has made a $10 billion investment in, in OpenAI. They're licensing their software. They're gonna be building it into the next generation of Microsoft Office. But right now you still need to hand code this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is take Josh's prompts that he had. Josh recommends that you put in prompts that really give guidance, much like a creative brief if you were giving this to a content creative team. So he had uh, recommendations for what the task is, what the role of AI is, who the audience is, uh, what are we wanting it to create, and then what the intent is. And I think that's very useful information. So what I said for me uh, on his prompt, it was, I wanted to create a PowerPoint presentation on innovation at GP Strategies. After all, we are a very innovative company. So I wanted to see what would come about from that. I put down here, the intent is to educate the audience on innovation at GP Strategies, provide details focusing on our innovation, highlight specific case studies, so I wanna see what is happening there. And you're gonna see there is a list of information that is immediately generated here. And based on this also, there was the tactical thing of saying, include an intro slide, use headings and bullets, use markdown code that allows the parser when we ingest this into PowerPoint to have some differentiation, use headings and bullets, a pretty darn decent outline here. What I'm going to do is follow Josh's recommendations. His step two was to literally copy all of this information since we want to try to turn this into a PowerPoint. I mean, that's the task at hand here. We're going to go ahead and copy all this information. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to hit copy. And in a new window, I'm going to go to Office 365. Okay. We're going to log on in. He says use the web version. So we're going to use the web version of Microsoft Word here. I'm going to open up a blank document per the recommendation. And I'm just going to paste it. I'm literally going to do Control V and just paste that in there. Okay. You can see it's all dark. Don't worry about that so much. The fact is, uh, I think it was like Prego back in the 70s. It's in there. The content is in there, all right? So the next topic at hand is we need to get these files into PowerPoint. Josh's recommendation, I thought this was very cool, is hit File, go down to Export, and then Export to PowerPoint Presentation Preview. So let's take a look at that. And what's interesting here is that PowerPoint is looking at the text and going, hmm, let's think about this. What kind of design might you want, all right? So lots of different choices from absolutely zero design to something kind of spicy. And you know what? This is actually different than when I tested this out yesterday. So I'm gonna just select this theme and hit export. And you're seeing that we have Microsoft is exporting this content the presentation is ready. So let's open this presentation up. You're gonna notice this is still in the web version of Microsoft PowerPoint, all right? So you can see we've got different slides that have been dynamically generated. So let's just see what ChatGPT brought up for us based on my topic of innovation and GP strategies. 
All right, so it's gone ahead and um, got headers and bullets. Now, obviously, I wouldn't personally write these or want these to even look like this. I mean, this is more like a document. This isn't more like a presentation format, but there's some stuff here, right? So let's just look at this. Number one, we've got some um, bits of information, so that's not terrible. Uh, we do have the ability to take a look at this. You know, let's say this. I would at least at a bare minimum do some cleanup and get rid of things like this. I wouldn't probably call this introduction, but you get the point. You know, it's something. I mean, this would work for a fifth grade report. Let's look at some of the things that are actually here, though, in terms of uh, training solutions continuous learning. I mean, if this is a persuasional based element, blended learning approach, a case study. Um, yeah, so what you'd want to say is number one, is um, chat GPT or the generative AI, is it hallucinating here? I mean, are they just bringing up confident yet untrue facts and stats? But at least the idea of formulating information, I think is very interesting. Uh, the fact is that GP strategies, we really are about performance improvement. So let's see if these would back up. I mean, data-driven strategies, that, that aligns with what we're doing. So at least uh, gamification, that's a big part of what we're doing. And yeah, if this is something that's true or false, I've got to assume this doesn't feel very true. It's almost like a wish. But maybe it's something where you go, all right, this is giving me something to go on. I mean, maybe this is your muse to say, is there something within our organization that does back this up? Is it not quite like this, but is this at least something that we can investigate? I think there's a lot of value there. You know, digital transformation is a big part of what we do. Um, collaboration case study. So yeah, there's opportunities here. So hopefully you can see that from an unblanking of the page, this is something. I mean, I wouldn't say that this is going to replace what I do. And if I just look at this in straight presentation mode, I mean, this is not on brand by any stretch, but I could do things like apply a different design to it. So if I just put this in uh, one of our GP strategies design concepts, let's just see what happens if we do that. So I've immediately changed the fonts to at least a former version of GP strategies fonts here. You can see, so the bullets have immediately adapted. You know, I could go in and swap out pictures. Um, some of these are pretty darn cheesy and could at least have something to work on. Okay, so hopefully you can see that you can get a lot done going from OpenAI to Word to PowerPoint, this round trip process. It's actually pretty darn impressive in terms of what's possible. I see there's a lot of value here in terms of what we would call breaking the page or having AI be your research assistant, give it a task. Um, I also see significant opportunity to have something like open AI open in a virtual collaboration session where you have two or three stakeholders, you ask it interesting questions, and then you have it come up. And then you might even say something like this, okay, I'm gonna send it a message and say, make this more persuasive. It's going to take that same information and now adapt it and give us uh, a little bit more sauce. And I think that's the key value here with AI is that you can go ahead and start looking at it and making additional demands of it and see what you like. So typically it's a round trip affair where you're doing two or three rounds here, much like you would with a typical creative endeavor and see where you're at here. So but you could see it's really easy to just copy all this content, uh, just highlight it, right click it, uh, bring that into a Word document. I'm going to open up a new Word document here. I mean, this is within a few seconds. You can go ahead, paste this in there, and hit File, Export, PowerPoint. Um, just randomly choose a PowerPoint deck here. Obviously, you know, what I would probably recommend to keep it clean is just go with clear, uh, unvarnished, and then select your own images. Let it do its thing open that presentation up. And uh, yeah, you've got some pretty decent unblanking of content. So I mean, at that point, it's incumbent on you as a professional and a human to parse this and say, is this worth it? Is there something here I can take? 
But, uh, you know, compare that to the old days of just going back to going, all right, I've got to do a uh, research on GP strategies, my organization, and I need to go straight from nothing. Well, then you might be saying, okay, what are our solutions? Um, What are some work examples and case studies? You know, in seconds, we've at least got some things going here that may or may not be worth it. So... I can also say on the flip side, as someone who is seasoned at this, has a lot of critical thinking skills in terms of storytelling and persuasion, you know what? I would probably initially look at this and just say, okay, let me see if if I like where you're going there. If I find something, I would probably mark that down as, uh, you know, like put a pin in it type thing. And then I would most likely go in here and start looking for critical thinking. So the long and short of it is AI is not here yet to take your job. And as Josh Cavalier would certainly recommend, use this to catalyze your process, to turbocharge it, to add more. You as a human are at the top of the food chain and you want to go ahead and use AI to inspire, to help you make creative decisions. And that's certainly what I found. So I think I'm gonna rest well tonight and, um, and realize that this can be my friend. It can be my R2D2. Um, it's not the flip-flop where I'm um, hooked up to a tube and I'm feeding the AI, at least for now. Signing off for now, Michael Teal, GP Strategies, and my little homegrown YouTube site, Presentation Plus Ups.